and um, sorry, I, I forgot to hit the record button, uh, that folks are getting ready to travel again. And uh, TSA saw a record breaking um, numbers next week, uh, or, or sorry, last week since COVID. Um, you know, they were, I guess they were welcoming over 800,000 travelers. So I guess it's good to see that people are getting back to travel. Of course, we want them to make sure that they are staying safe uh, and taking the proper precautions and remembering to always um, be aware of their surroundings. And so I'm excited about today's discussion because we are getting a, we're gonna get a snapshot from a security advisor's, an expert security advisor's perspective. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, move on to our webinar housekeeping rules. So the webinar is being recorded. Um, we're gonna try and keep it a 45 minute session with 15 minute Q&A at the end of the session. Of course, this one is gonna be a lot more interactive than some of our previous webinars because we're going to be pulling pictures up on the screen and we're gonna ask for some of your feedback on those pictures. Um, so uh, of course, the feedback throughout the session, but also if you have questions, make sure that you put those in the, in the chat um, and we'll go ahead and answer those questions for you. Uh, and of course, the slides and the recording will be available after this session as a resource for you because we're going to have a lot of links um, at the end of it that will provide you with some really great resources. And there is going to be a survey after the webinar. Please, we love your feedback. Um, it's those surveys that allow us to uh, understand how to better support our you know, community of listeners and watchers so that we can um, you know, do, more, uh, do more series, more webinars in this series uh, in the future. And so we love to hear your feedback. So let's meet the experts. So Stacy Porter, Porter Global Security, he is the principal uh, security advisor there. Um, just uh, probably the, the most professional uh, security prof uh, person that I've ever met that likes to also have fun while doing his job. Um, I've gotten to know Stacy over the, the last year and uh, just working with him and understanding from his perspective, you know, what to look for when it comes to safety and security has just uh, given me a more holistic view of how to be able to help my clients and my customers um, and, and be better supportive of them and what they're trying to accomplish in, in their, you know, in their facilities. Um, and then of course, myself, Ashley Davis with Punch Alert. Uh, I'm most well known for my mother on a, uh, on a mission tagline, you know, to bring communities together and save lives. Um, I just, I love connecting people with resources and I, I love being that support um, to my clients and customers so that, you know, they can uh, not lose sleep at night so they can get better sleep at night. So if I can help them with, solve a pain point with a solution or with, uh, with some expert um, consulting, then I, I'm happy to do so. Um, and uh, so I just wanna ask Stacy if he could share something about himself that maybe we don't know. Thank you, Ashley. I appreciate the uh, introduction. Thank you to everybody that's on this webinar. I just want to take a moment and uh, just give a brief background about myself. Uh, again, uh, you see my bio and my brief bio right here. I do have over 20 years uh, vested with the federal government. I retired in 2018. And from there, I started my uh, company called Porter Global Security LLC. With that, uh, conduct risk assessments or vulnerability assessments on businesses, houses of worship, and schools. Had opportunity to meet Ashley uh, some time ago and we really hit it off. So we've been partnering up uh, for quite a time uh, doing these webinars. Something interesting about me, uh, I have so many interesting stories during my time with the federal government, but um, one thing I will add, the reason why I do what I do, uh, I had an opportunity uh, working at the White House uh, when 9-11 occurred. I was working that day and I won't go into great detail as to everything that we did while working at the White House during 9-11, but after that, President Bush, he created a Department of Homeland Security. And you know, I just thought about what can I do uh, to make sure we never have another attack on our homeland. So I joined the uh, Federal Air Marshal Service, had an opportunity to travel all around the country. 
And then from there, I branched it to uh, doing risk assessments on our nation's airports. I also did risk assessments on several airports out of the country as well. So again, you know, I have a vast knowledge on airport security, what to look for, what not to look for. And you can imagine when you're doing the uh, physical security assessments on airports, it takes a lot of work and it takes team effort. Something interesting about me, uh, most recent, uh, last year before COVID-19, 2019, uh, the year 2019, I had an opportunity to work with uh, Melissa McCarthy. If you don't know who that is, she's a uh, well-known actress. Uh, she was here in Atlanta and they were filming a uh, Netflix movie. I can't give out the name of the movie. Of course, you can easily uh, Google it, but uh, right now it's not out on Netflix just yet. But I did executive protection the entire time with her while she was shooting the movie. So I had an opportunity to stand behind the scenes and see exactly how they do things. And she was really personable, personable. So I had an opportunity to really get to know her and I also had an opportunity to get to know her husband. So again, that was uh, something different for me but at the same time, I figured if I can uh, stand next to a president, I'm pretty sure I can uh, do a great job protecting uh, actress or actor. So I had an opportunity to work with her. Also, uh, another person that you guys may know that's going to be in this movie is uh, Octavia Spencer. Uh, both of them were super nice. Uh, they treated me as if I was part of the team. So that was a lot of fun. Thanks, Ashley. Yeah, no, that's that's awesome. I. When I heard that story about you, um, I love Melissa McCarthy. I'm a huge fan of hers. And so um, I'm excited to see that, that movie come out. Thank you for sharing. So let's get right into it. So travel do's and don'ts. I don't know about you guys, but I love this little guy. Um, I'm thinking of putting him as my profile picture, to be honest, because <laughs> when I travel, I feel like him sometimes, right? Where I got my camera, I got my, my, uh, my binoculars, I got my map. I'm ready to see the world and like right now uh, we're stuck right we can't you we can sort of get out but we can't you know fully fully get out so i feel like i'm almost cross-eyed because i haven't been able to travel as much as i would like to um so i really resonate with <laughs> with this picture um so let's get into the travel do's and don'ts um so choosing the best airline these are some travel do's and don'ts but stacy you know what is it that you look for from your perspective when you're choosing the best airline to travel of course looking at this slide the uh, thumbs down uh, in red is the don'ts and the uh, thumbs up uh, is the uh, do's so one of the things of course uh, we all have our favorite hotels we have our favorite airlines uh, just we, we have several favorite things we like to just stick with i know with me uh, i'm a creature by habit and when it comes to foods restaurants you know i just want to stick with what i know so looking at the uh, first uh, uh slide on the left or the first uh bubble on the left um we all know we've seen it on the news uh airline industry they're about making money and right now, United Airlines, American Airlines, you know, they're selling their seats at capacity. Uh, again, it's about making money because the airline industry, they've been hit hard during COVID-19, just as we saw when 9-11 occurred. Uh, it took them, you know, a few years to bounce back after 9-11. And most likely, it'll probably take them to 2022, possibly 2023, to bounce back from COVID-19. But of course, many of us are still fear fearful of getting on an aircraft. So, these are some of the things uh, you want to look for. Uh, do your homework. Uh, right now, Delta, JetBlue, Alaska, Southwest Airlines, which, you know, they're not going to continue this forever. But right now, you know, they are limiting uh, the amount of people that they uh, put on the aircraft. I know Delta, they're flying their planes at 70 percent capacity, and I believe they're doing that up until September. Uh, of course, um, you know, you, you want to make sure many of you may have uh, miles with uh, United Airlines. Some of you may have certain miles with American Airlines, and that's who you want to stick with. I know some companies may have a contract with certain airlines. So again, if you're not comfortable flying on United Airlines or flying on American Airlines, um, you know, you can ask, uh, is this aircraft filled to capacity? Or if it is, can you be placed on another flight? Uh, that's easier said than done, of course, because if you're traveling for business, you know, you may have a certain time that you need to be at your location and it may not be that easy for you to just jump off your morning flight and jump on to a, a later flight. So again, you know, as long as you're protecting yourselves, you're, you're doing your washing of the hands and everything that uh, the CDC is asking us to do, hopefully uh, you'll be okay with that. Uh, just keep that in mind. But right now for me, if I don't have to travel, I'm not going to travel. But if I do and it's drivable, 
I'm probably going to drive in my vehicle to that location. So just keep that in mind. But of course, if I have to fly out to the West Coast, uh, I'm going to do exactly what this screen right here says. I'll look at Delta. I'll look at uh, Southwest Airlines or possibly JetBlue and see if they're still blocking the middle seat or if it's filled to capacity. Yeah, and for me, you know, the things that, I, because I love um, research and everything else, right? So, but part of that research is talking to people that are doing it. And so I do know a couple of folks that have absolutely had to travel during this time. And so just asking them, you know, what was it like? What, it, what was your experience? Um, you know, and, and, you know, did you feel safe? Things like that, you know, really gave me comfort in knowing that, you know, they're trying to do their best, um, these major airlines. But again, just doing your due diligence and understanding, you know, where your best options are um, is key here, right, to your safety and the safety of others. So watch the seating chart. I know, you know, when you're looking at flying and you, you, you know, you're looking at the additional costs and everything else, you know, sometimes you have to pay more to get those good seats. What, what's your do's and don'ts here for watching the seating chart, Stacy? Again, this is uh, important as well, especially someone like myself, uh, you know, being 6'6", six, six, um, and you know, if you're going to put me at the, uh, in the first seat uh, in the cabin, then there's a wall right there. So now I'm going to have issues with the uh, leg room. So again, I try to uh, pay close attention to this, and especially if uh, the company is booking your flights. Make sure, as we see here, you know, for example, Seat Guru, uh, you know, you have so many different apps out here where you can go on and take a look at, you know, if the airline is filled to capacity, or you can go on the uh, flight that you're flying on. You probably can look at their website and see, okay, I noticed that, you know, towards the exit row, they may have uh, various seats open. You know, be careful, you know, I would be careful definitely uh, taking a seat uh, all the way in the back by the bathroom because one, you're going to have so many people bumping you if you're trying to sleep going to the restroom. And not only that, you're going to have a line of people waiting to go into the restroom. So if you're trying to do work on that plane before you get to your meeting or if you're trying to rest on that plane, you know, you're going to constantly be getting bumped by someone trying to go back and forth to the restroom. So again, that's very important to know where your seat is on that aircraft. Uh, some may prefer sitting close to an exit, uh, uh, entr uh, exit uh, row, if you will. So just keep that in mind. But um, those are some of the things that we can look out for as far as uh, apps are concerned. And as far as the uh, thumbs up, uh, this is very important. Again, you know, being a tall guy like myself, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with the uh, entertainment boxes on the air aircraft. But be mindful of that. A lot of times we're asked to put our items under the seat or we're asked to put our items in the overhead. Uh, that's good if you can put it in the overhead. But if you have that entertainment box uh, below, it's hard for you to put your uh, you know, items under your seat. And if you're closer to the um, front of the aircraft and say all the uh, space is filled to capacity, I've seen on aircraft, I'm sure many of you have as well, where you have to take your item probably or the flight attendant would take your item all the way to the back but of course during COVID-19 the flight attendants they're not going to be touching your luggage so most likely you're going to have to take your luggage to the back of the uh, aircraft where there's open space and you're sitting in the front of the aircraft now you have to wait for everybody to deplane once you land at your location before you can get all the way to the back and grab your luggage so again Watching that seating chart is so important because that helps you out as to where you want to sit and you know keep in mind you're not the only ones doing this. Probably everybody on that flight uh, is doing the same thing. But if you can jump on that early enough to, uh, you know, select your prime seat, you know, that's definitely something you want to do. So I definitely learned something new today, Stacey. I've traveled plenty of times and I've always, I feel like I'm always stuck in that seat that has that entertainment box and I had no idea what it was. Now I know what it is so that I could go back. <laughs> I don't want to sit where your entertainment box is. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So of course, you know, we we all look at paying for extra space and and you know as as a uh, as a um, uh, a luxury, right? But maybe these days, paying for extra space is a necessity. Um, so tell us a little bit about your do's and don'ts here. 
Well, well most of my travel consisted of uh, business travel when, when I traveled all throughout the United States and uh, you know overseas as well. Um, one of the things I will say, uh, again, the uh, red thumbs down is uh, you do not want to keep the uh, basic economy option if possible. And I've done this a lot, even on personal travel where, you know, I'll go to the ticket counter, get all my information. You don't want to talk to the gate, uh, the uh, uh, personnel at the uh, ticket counter. The person you want to talk to is the uh, gate agent when you get to your location, as far as if you're at gate one, two, or three. So when you get to your uh, gate, you know, just kindly go up to the gate agent and just inquire about the flight. Is it to, you know, at full capacity? If not, uh, is it possible that the exit row is open? And depending on hopefully they're in a great mood and it's happened to me quite a bit where I was able to switch from, you know, a middle seat to an exit row seat. Now, keep in mind when you get on that aircraft, uh, if you sit in the exit row, you know, there are uh, things that you're going to have to assist with uh, if the aircraft, uh, you know, there's an emergency on the aircraft and you have to assist the flight attendant. So there are things that you will have to do sitting in the uh, exit row. But for me, I prefer the exit row because of the leg room, as I mentioned, being 6'6". Six, six, there's only, only so many spaces where I can sit when I'm on the aircraft. If possible, uh, looking at the green thumbs up, you know, many of you may travel quite a bit for your uh, company. And if you do, you know, you can always join the uh, Delta or possibly whatever airline you fly, join their, um, uh, I guess, their point system. I forget what you actually call it, where you can earn uh, travel points. And not only that, you can also do that for the hotel industry. If you're traveling quite a bit for your uh, business and you're staying at a hotels, I would definitely recommend, if possible, staying at a Sheraton hotel because Sheraton and Marriott, they share points. And you can build up so many points with these hotels where I've, you know, done, you know, travel during my career where I probably had well over 200,000 points with uh, Sheraton and I was able to take a vacation without having to come out of pocket with that. Or if I, if I didn't want to take a vacation, you can, you know, trade those points in and, you know, purchase luggage. So again, those are some things that you want to think of. And if, you know, you can swing the cash, of course, do what you can. But for me, you know, I had opportunities, especially flying overseas. Uh, anytime I flew overseas, I sat in first class and that was definitely a plus for me because you're able to uh, maneuver those seats much better than you can uh, as far as the seats are in the back. So if you can uh, spend the extra money, if you have it, if not, you know, talk with your uh, company and see what your uh, per diem is to uh, purchase the airline ticket or uh, try to use your uh, bonus points if you have those with the uh, specific airline industry. Yeah, so for me, right, the basic economy option just means I want my body to get from this location <laughs> to that location, right? It doesn't come with anything else. I mean, maybe you could bring like a small little carry-on or, or not even a carry-on, a small purse or bag, um, but that's literally what that means. So I, I completely agree with you that if you have those miles or if you've built up some of those rewards points, see if you can go there first, right, to, to get an upgrade. Um, uh, because uh, otherwise you're just flying yourself there, right? <laughs> yes, and one of the things you want to keep in mind, especially with this now, uh, if you have the points or if you uh, want to spend the extra money, you know, you know, try to think about the uh, social distancing if you can. You know, if you're up in the first class area, you know, you, you tend to have a little bit more room up there. You're not kind of bunched in the back with so many people. Uh, again, you know, airline industry, they're requiring a lot of people to uh, don the PPEs when they're flying on the flights. But still, I know there's some people out here that are fearful of getting on the aircraft. So again, you know, if you travel quite a bit and you have so many uh, miles built up with the uh, airline industry, use those miles. Uh, I wouldn't recommend if you're taking an hour flight, you know, I would save those miles for something important. Like for me, if I'm going from where I am in Georgia and I have to fly out to California, that's probably a four hour flight. So most likely, I may want to use my points on that where I can hopefully practice some sort of social distancing on the aircraft. Yeah, that's definitely a good point. Do not waste your, you know, that upgrade for an hour flight, you know, just take that flight and, and save that for next time. That's a very good point. So, you know, I'm all about technology and utilizing technology and there's some really fun um, new technology out there that, that you have here. Tell us a little bit about, you know, the do's and don'ts of utilizing technology. Well, first thing I will advise, if you're flying today, especially now and no aircraft, they're utilizing a sanitizer, if they're not utilizing the PPEs, I, I would definitely uh, stay away from them. 
you, you want to make sure again that you're doing your part. Um, you know, don't just rely on the airline industry. You want to make sure you do your part as well. So if you get to um, you know the airport and you realize, okay, they're not requiring anybody to wear these PPEs, which I know that's been a back and forth with the airline industry and the federal government, uh, asking the federal government to get involved and mandate you know PPEs, but. They haven't done so. So the airline industries, they've been taking it upon themselves to do their part. Um, and I know it's been all over the news. You know, this, this person's been banned from Delta. This person's been banned from uh, America Airlines. So again, you know, don't get yourself in a trick bag going back and forth with the uh, company. If I own a company and my policy is you can't come into my store without a shirt, the first thing you're going to do is put a shirt on. So just keep that in mind when you're traveling on a uh, aircraft is that you know make sure they're offering ppes or that's a requirement because again we're living in the uh COVID, uh world right now and you know definitely don't want to be traveling and, and not being safe during that time uh the green thumbs up over here a lot of people ask me over and over is it safe for me to fly on an aircraft uh, i would say you're, you're probably safer on an aircraft right now than you are sitting out in the gate area and the reason, or in the, um, as you're um, going onto the aircraft, if, when you're in the jet bridge, because most times when you see that, a lot of times you're bunched up in the jet bridge waiting to get on that aircraft. Uh, I know right now because of social distancing, they're trying to do the best that they can with that by just calling a certain amount of people and allowing them to go down to the aircraft. But just in the gate area itself, you see so many people congregating. Once you get on that aircraft, I know it's a tube, the air is circulated and they use what, what's called a HEPA filter. You can also inquire about this, but most of the uh, aircraft that you fly on today, uh, the HEPA filters that they use are the same type of HEPA filters that are used in hospitals as well as uh, some business offices. And what that does is it catches probably 98 to 99 percent of the particles on the aircraft. Now, again, you still have the two to one percent that, um, you know, is not catching and hopefully that person in front of you or behind you or to the side of you, they are wearing the mask and nobody's coughing or sneezing on that aircraft. But just keep that in mind that, you know, the airline industry, they, they use some of the top uh, surgical grade HEPA filters uh, on flights. And again, as I mentioned, you know, are they uh, providing sanitizer or do you have that in your bag? I always recommend carrying yourself a little travel kit bag and keeping these items on, on your person as far as the sanitizations, as far as the PPEs, you know, keep all those things with you. Um, you know, as far as the um, last piece that you see right here with the green thumbs up, you know, as far as the flexible policies for flight changes, I know uh, right now, uh, just like with 9-11, you know, everybody, they were doing whatever they could uh, for law enforcement once the airline industry picked back up again. Hey, what can we do? How can we help you? But people forgot that fast when 9-11 occurred. Same thing here uh, with COVID-19. You know, people are so nice and welcoming that they'll do what they can to help you out. But as time goes on, again, as I mentioned, you know, the airline industry is about making money. You know, you want to make sure they're still uh, practicing, practicing these policies and procedures. Uh, can I change my flight? If I change my flight, will I be charged a fee for doing that? So hopefully some of these airline industries are still working with their passengers because if it's not for the passengers, then they're not going to be able to operate as a business. So, so in everything that you talked about, right, in the green area, the green thumbs up area, there is a um, extension from Fly Pilota and it's, uh, it's new, it's called Fly Safe, and it can uh, show you, you know, what safety precautions are being taken. You know, it allows you to review them all in one place. You can download it, and when you pull up like the United website, it'll go over, you know, uh, different ratings and whether they include, include mask requirements and seat blocking and ca uh, capacity capping. So, um, and it, it even goes into, you know, whether or not they have the surgical grade HEPA filters. So it really is a great use of technology to, to captivate all of that information in one place for the multiple, you know, um, airlines that you're looking at traveling with. And then of course, you know, me uh, and my, my travel background, I have to always kind of throw in here travel advisors, right? They're going to be your best friends when it comes to traveling. They're going to watch your back. They're going to make sure that you are fully taken care of. So whether you, you go the route of technology or you go the route, route of a travel agent or travel advisor, 
um, just know that these are some of the options available to you. And this is actually a really cool feature that I just learned about recently too, that I'm, that I'm excited to also share with travel advisors because obviously it will help them better help their uh, clients and customers as well. All right. And then, okay, so we all know off peak, on peak, we're in COVID, so I'm not sure what peak we're at. <laughs> what are your what are your thoughts here? <laughs> well, well, to be honest, you know this this all uh, happened. You know you can do this before COVID, but right now, uh, of course, again, this all goes back to if you're traveling for business. Uh, a lot of times, you know, you may not have a say as to okay, I want to travel. You know, late at night. You know, you may have a meeting. Uh, that you have to be at and you want to get on that first flight uh, going out. So again, you know, the uh, popular times, of course, is uh, early morning flights. I I'm sure we've all been at the airport, you know, probably yelling at our kids, getting frustrated because it's so crowded in the morning. Everybody's trying to get out early so they can get to their location and relax and, and unwind and do what they need to do. Or if you are, you know, flying on early evening flights, uh, these flights, again, you know, those are the most crowded. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Now, if you do have flexibility in your schedule, looking at the green thumbs up, you know, these are definitely the perfect times. I've always heard over and over Tuesdays or Wednesdays uh, is the best time to start looking for flights. And if you're traveling on a personal time, this is probably a great option for you uh, to look at the uh, flights during a Tuesday or Wednesday where you can get the cheaper prices. I mean, you know, again, that, that's a big difference when you're talking about uh, saving possibly two or three hundred dollars on a flight going to your uh, destination. So, again, you know, these are some of the uh, stipulations that you have in place when you want to fly. Uh, I know uh, with me, when I used to travel to the various airports to do my uh, physical security assessments, I would leave out on a Sunday, you know, sometimes depending on where I was going, if I was going West Coast, uh, East Coast or West Coast. I would leave, uh, you know, I would try to leave uh, mid-afternoon if I could. And by the time I got out to West Coast, you know, it's still early enough out there where I can grab a bite to eat and still, you know, get plenty of rest so I can start my day Monday morning. But again, you know, that all depends on, you know, what your schedule's like uh, on business or what your schedule's like on personal time. Uh, if I'm traveling personal and if I want to leave on a Tuesday, then I may stay an entire week uh, at my location, especially if I'm traveling to go see family, you know, I may stay from Tuesday to Tuesday so I can save uh, on, on those extra dollars uh, because a lot of times you also have, also have to factor in when you're traveling, most likely you're not just paying for that flight, you're probably paying for rental car services as well. So again, you know, just do your uh, due diligence and, and ensure you're saving, you know, the, as best you can and uh, doing as best you can when it comes to traveling. So these are the two things as far as the do's and don'ts. Uh, early morning and, you know, early evening, most crowded and uh, possibly, uh, you know, midday uh, are less crowded uh, when it's time to travel. Yes. And of course, you know, I don't know if uh, you're sitting there thinking, oh my gosh, there's like so much to think about when you travel now, um, as, if, as if it wasn't overwhelming before, having to plan your itinerary and everything else, and now you're having to, you know, take, it, take into consideration safety and security and all these uh, other different variables, right? So again, I just, I, I wanna emphasize, travel advisors are there for you. They, they understand the ins and outs mm -hmm. of the industry. They know, you know, when the best times are to travel, so you, you don't have to go out and do all the research and all of that. They do the due diligence for you. And so that it makes, it streamlines your travel and, and, and then they understand, you know, your preferences and, and, and what, you, what you like and when you like it and things like that. So they can really be a huge benefit to you. Okay. Yes, and if you're not comfortable, oops, sorry. I was no, gonna go say ahead. just uh, add something to the last flight. I was gonna say, and definitely, if you're not comfortable uh, flying right now on an aircraft, Again, if you choose those middle of the day flights where it's less crowded, uh, you know, as I mentioned earlier, you know, you'll have less people on that plane, hopefully, and you won't have people bothering you. Most likely, people may want to sleep. So that's less talking and less movement on that aircraft. And, you know, you can get to your destination safe and sound. Yep. All right. So now that we've gone through those, I know we're all waiting for the pictures, which is coming up. So I need to make sure you're awake because we're gonna go over the airport security do's and don'ts. And I'm gonna share some pictures with you um, from airports uh, around um, the US 
We're not going to tell you which airports, okay? What we're looking at in these pictures are what are the do's and what are the don'ts? What do you spot? You know, what, what, should, what, what should probably not be there? What's good that it's there? You know, those type of things. All right, so I'm going to share the first picture with you. And then what we're going to need is for you to type your answers in the chat box of what you think is a do or don't of that picture. And then we'll share with you the do's and don'ts uh, on, on the next slide after the, the main picture. So let's see if you can spot them. All right, so here's our first picture. We're going to give you just a little bit to kind of analyze it, look around. What do you think? What's a do? What's a don't? What am I looking for? What am I looking at? <laughs> we'll give you a few sec a few uh, few minutes. We want to hear from you, so put it in the chat box. What looks off, and what looks like it should be there? Okay. Yep, unattended baggage. I see that from one of the one of the folks. Anything else? I know that was the first thing that I spotted. I was like, oh, that bag's out of place. That shouldn't be there. There's only maybe one or two more things in the picture. I'll give you another few seconds. Parked car, yep, parked car right there on the, it looks like they're not moving. I don't know, maybe they're unloading, but no doors are open. Yep, another person said that vehicle parked. All right, so let's show you on the next slide. Okay, what are the do's and don'ts? So what are we looking at here, Stacy? What's a don't right here? Okay, uh, and this isn't specific to airports. I mean, you see a lot of uh, businesses and I'm here in Georgia. So for example, you take the uh, Mercedes Benz Stadium, a, a lot of companies or businesses, they, they love that glass look for some reason. Uh, and that's okay if that's what you're going to use, but make sure that glass is uh, some type of film on or it's protected. So again, you know, looking at this and, and I don't want to go any further because I have to explain it with the uh, the display as well before I talk about the uh, glass. So if you want to click the button again. Okay. Yep. So we see the unattended bag. Yes. And what I did when I um, travel, I did this uh, physical security assessment. First thing that stood out to me when I saw this, I said, wow, this is a pretty cool display that uh, they have right here. But as I looked at it on the security side, anybody can introduce a bag into this location again you know the backpack that's easily spotted that's all i had so i just wanted to see what it looked like uh, to take a picture and you know one to see if anybody would recognize it but just imagine if i had a regular suitcase and i were to introduce it there the doors that you see right there you can easily introduce a bag uh walk out the door jump in that vehicle that you all see parked right there and just go on your merry way now, of course, you know, most airports, or all airports have cameras, but usually cameras are pretty much used after the effect. So after everything's all done and occurred. So keep in mind that I can easily park my vehicle as you see right there, run inside, drop a bag off, run out and jump in that vehicle. Another thing I wanted to point out, uh, the bollards that you see uh, just uh, outside by the vehicles. Uh, that's a great piece that uh, you see right there. And the reason why I have that there because one, you can't have vehicle penetration. Again, you have a lot of these uh, VB IEDs as we saw in uh, Oklahoma. Uh, the vehicle is able to pull right in uh, front of the building and detonate. So this is one of the things that uh, the airport, you see that a lot uh, when you travel, you see bollards, uh, especially at your uh, entry and exit doors where a vehicle can't fit through. As far as the glass itself, again, if I'm going to introduce some uh, device uh, in this display area, you know, that's a lot of glass. And if this glass isn't protected, I mean, you have shrapnel all over the place. So just keep that in mind. And again, the reason why oh, I think we lost Stacy or Maybe it could be my internet. Can you hear me okay? OK, 
Can you guys hear me okay? Okay, so we can hear me, but I can't hear Stacy. Oh, it looks like, you know, I don't know if you guys have been dealing with this too, but our, my internet has been so wonky and it looks like it just kicked Stacy off. So we'll just give him another minute to get logged back, logged back on here. Um, so just give him a minute and we'll get him back on here. Sorry about that, guys. And I was so afraid that my internet was going to go down because it was just so spotty yesterday. So I apologize. We'll pick it back up here in just a second. Okay, it looks like he's getting logged. Yes. In. There you are, Stacy. I am here. Yes, I apologize. <laughs> uh, we talk about technology. And sure enough, technology <laughs> I, I lost my uh, internet service, so I'm on my phone now. So hopefully you guys can hear me well. We, we can hear you just fine. And here, I was telling them I was so worried that my internet was going to go down. <laughs> yes. Okay, so should we move on to the next one? Yes, I, I think unless anybody has any questions, um, you know, feel free to put it in the chat box or if we want to entertain those questions at the end. But again, as you see right here, the do's and don'ts. Uh, as I mentioned, the uh, terminal pickup, you know, has the uh, bollards outside which is great. You, you want to see that along the uh, terminal frontage as well as the uh, terminal pickup area, uh, especially uh, when it comes to vehicles. Uh, not only that, um, I don't want to jump too far ahead, so, so I'll just stop right there as far as vehicles are concerned when they're outside of the uh, terminal. But as far as the don'ts, uh, as I mentioned, you know, the luggage display, it was a great looking display. Uh, I thought it was awesome, but you know, when you wear that security hat, these are some of the things that you're going to notice when you're uh, doing your physical security assessments. Yeah, it's definitely definitely interesting when you get designed to do something to really fancy up a place, but they don't have that security perspective, right? And they're not thinking, oh, you know, it, it looks like unattended baggage. Okay, so here's our next picture. We'll give you guys a couple, maybe a few seconds or a few, uh, 30 seconds or so to look through and see any do's or any don'ts that you see in this picture. And go ahead and put them in the chat. I know I, my first thought was, okay, this is the kind of airport I want to be in where there's nobody there and I don't have to deal, have to worry about social distancing or anything, you know, just go in, fly, come out, get my bag, walk on out to my car, <laughs> to whoever's picking me up, just that ease, you know, because you know me, Stacey, I, dr I travel seven deep, so I feel like I would fill up this space <laughs> real quick um, <laughs> with, yes. with me and all my kids. <laughs> My, and my husband. So when I see pictures like this, it's like, yes, when is that time at that airport? That's <laughs> <travel?"> <laughs> yes, that's, that's the best time to do it. <laughs> so actually, the, so someone had something pretty interesting in the chat. They said, it looks deserted. What if I need help, right? Where, where do I yell? Do I scream? Is there a panic button? How is anybody going to know if I need no. help, right? That's a good point. I like that. Yeah, and a lot of times when you travel and you're in the baggage claim area, you know, they do have office spaces. You know, if you're flying on Southwest or United, you may look, you know, in front behind or to the side and you'll see, you know, United office space and you can walk over there and get assistance from, uh, you know, the personnel that's working over there and say, hey, you know, I've been standing at the uh, baggage claim number two and my bags never came up and they can assist you with that. So uh, I know it's not captured in this picture, but most airports have the uh, office space. And this, this actually, that's a great um, point because, you know, Punch Alert, the company that I'm with, it would be a perfect solution for this, right? So if they offered Punch Alert and that panic button to all of their, you know, visitors and their travelers that come through their um, airports, the, the visitor would have a panic button in the palm of their hands that they would be able to report, I'm having an emergency in the airport. They would show the location of where it was in the airport because there would also be kind of Wi-Fi access or Bluetooth beacons that would give them better indoor location as well that would be set up with the system. And, and it would go directly to the emergency responders of the airport. So I, I love that you brought that up, Sandra. So thank you so much. That's a, that's a great uh, observation. All right, so I'm gonna go to the next slide and I'm gonna click on some of the things that are good and bad. So go ahead, Stacey, I'll start clicking through. 
um, and you you okay. just talk. No, you just go ahead. Uh, again, right here, this is a good. Uh, you see the. Uh, PTZ cameras, pan, tilt, zoom cameras, and they're overlooking the uh, baggage claim area as well as uh, the airport area that you see right here. So that's a good thing. Uh, again, I know uh, at one time, especially uh, in these areas right here where you go for your baggage claim, uh, I always uh, like to recommend, you know, you can't always have police officers in these locations, but maybe you can have, uh, you know, the airport ambassadors is what I call them, uh, especially during your peak times. When you have so many people around this area, a lot of times when you're in the baggage claim area, most likely if you look outside, you have folks waiting to pick you up. So again, someone can easily drive up, jump out their vehicle and come into this area and grab bags off the belt and just walk right out with your bags or your items. So you just wanna keep in mind, especially during your peak times that you have someone kind of walking around monitoring this area. Again, you know, it looks deserted here as the uh, you know, person uh, asked in the question. And that's a good thing because sometimes when you have airports that are deserted like this, a lot of times you look on the uh, baggage claim area and you'll see bags on the belt and the belt's not moving. So again, I want to know how long has that bag been there? You know, if it's been there, what's your policy for not picking this bag up, taking it to your uh, location? So in case someone needed to come back and say, hey, I, I never retrieved my bag, or can someone easily introduce a bag there because they know that the bags are never picked up? So. That's why I wanted to highlight all these dudes right here that one, the baggage claim area is very clear, it's clean, uh, no bags, you don't see any unattended bags at all. The red with the thumbs down, uh, if you look closely at this picture, one, uh, look at the columns in the airport and right next to the columns you see a trash can or receptacle. So one of the things uh, I like to point out is why is that receptacle close to that column? So again, if I were to introduce some um, you know, IED item into that receptacle, that can easily explode, take the column down and possibly take down what's above uh, the baggage claim area. So just keep that in mind. You wanna keep those uh, receptacles away from those columns. I know they have bomb blast resistant receptacles and, and they place those strategically in and around the airport. But this right here, I just wanted to highlight how it's uh, butted up against the uh, columns and, and that's definitely not a good look right there. Yeah, that, that I that was something that I didn't catch, right? That I didn't even think about. So I know probably many people on this call are like, oh man, I didn't even think about that. That it's something that's an enclosed, you know, object that they can, you know, drop something into. And when it explodes, it would then take out the column and the structure of the airport. So it would do, you know, a lot more damage than if you had that, um, that bomb resistant um, garbage. And so this is just a, a recap of the do's and don'ts of that picture um, so that when you do have this uh, as a resource in the future, you know, you, you, uh, you, you have the do's and don'ts right there for you. So let's just move along because it looks like we're, we have just a couple of more pictures here. All right, so I'll give you about 30 more seconds to just think about, you know, what's a do and what's a don't. And, um, and we'll... Go ahead and drop them in the chat, and then we'll we'll show you the do's and don'ts from there. I think I see a do. I, I I learned from one of the pictures before what a do is, but let's see if anybody else picks it up. Lots of barriers in front. Yep. Thank you so much. That's exactly the right do. Right. We learned that from the first picture. I honestly, when you know. I, some of these pictures, when Stacy brought them to my attention at the first uh, time, you know, you just don't think about these things. I think, oh, there's barriers there for, I don't, it's like we live our lives and we don't question things. They're just like, okay, well, they're there and, you know, they must be there for a reason. And <laughs> it was just one of those things that are, it was an aha moment for me. The light bulb went off, right? Okay, so let's look and see uh, what the do's and don'ts are of this picture, right? So, yep, yeah, we got the, go ahead, Stacey. Yeah. Oh, I think I lost you again. And I, I can't hear Stacy. Okay, we'll let him get um yeah. Oh there you are. There you are. We can hear you again. Uh oh, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. Uh just looking at the uh trash can. Um, as we talked about earlier uh, with the uh, previous uh, slide, you know, this receptacle uh, is definitely away from the column. So again, you know, strategically placed, uh, I know it's up against the glass right 
next to the glass. But again, if you look closely, or if you were at this airport, you'll see this is a uh, blast resistant recept uh, receptacle. So again, you want to keep that in mind. But Oh man, Stacy, we can't hear you. It just dropped out again. I'm so sorry, guys. You know, it's a love-hate relationship with technology, but you know, what I think was Stacy was trying to say until Oh, there we go. We are you back? Oh shoot. I think we, I think we, um, oh, there you are. Can we hear you? Okay, I apologize again. Yes, <laughs> um, there I am. Okay. Yeah, I, I, you know, this this technology, you gotta love it. But uh, one of the things I wanted to highlight, the vehicles uh, in front of the terminal, uh, you know, you wanna be mindful of that. Uh, one of the things I didn't wanna do for this uh, webinar presentation, I didn't wanna uh, put any pictures in here with uh, law enforcement walking in uh, terminal frontage. You know, I just wanted to be uh, respectful of that. And not only that, you know, I didn't wanna put any uh, type of sensitive security information on here. So a lot of the airports, you will see uh, police presence or uh, at least the uh, traffic uh, officers along the uh, terminal frontage. So if these vehicles are parked here for a long period of time, you will have uh, someone advise them to move the vehicles. But again, how long should a vehicle be parked in front of the terminal? Not only that, if you're unloading, they're gonna allow you to unload, but if you're parking that vehicle and exiting, then that's something you need to keep in mind because you don't know what's in that vehicle and you don't wanna introduce anything uh, along the terminal frontage that shouldn't be there. The only vehicles that are parked outside should be the uh, airport vehicles or emergency vehicles. Uh, and if, this ve if these vehicles have been here for a long time, police presence may call records to come and have your vehicle towed and then you're gonna come out and wonder, okay, what happened to my vehicle? So just keep all that in mind. And someone, someone pointed out something pretty interesting in the chat. They said that it looks like if at night, um, you know, back by the windows might be dark, right? So you have all this lighting that's right here by the drop off area, but then there really isn't any lighting here. And I know I've, I've experienced this before where it's either the wee hours of the morning or late at night, and it does seem to be, you know, darker in this area. Um, so that's another good point that I wanted to bring up. Thank you for sharing that. Yes, and a lot of times when uh, you do these uh, physical security assessments, of course, this is a day shot, but I would definitely come back in the evenings because you want to see what things look like at night. Um, you know, it may look pretty and, and, you know, okay during the daytime, but I want to see how your airport or how your business functions in the evening hours. You know, is it well lit? Um, you know, what other safety uh, measures do you have in place during the evening hours? You know, you may not have uh, the, the police presence that you have during the daytime versus the evening hours. And those are some of the things I want to look for when I come back in the evening hours. Yeah, that's such a good point. Definitely. Okay, so here's a couple of pictures on this slide. One is a do, one is a don't. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and just share the, uh, the next slide here. If you, let's see if you just take a mental note, which one do you think is a do and which one do you think is a don't? Oh, there we go. So tell us a little bit about All right, and since we have that up. Yeah, yeah the uh, first picture on the left, uh, I know someone talked about the uh, evening hours. Um, this is definitely an evening shot of the uh, terminal frontage, but what I wanted to highlight was the uh, shrubbery that you see right here. You know, look how high it is, and is it groomed or should it be groomed? And not only that, you can easily get behind this area right here and introduce something uh, into this uh, you know, area. One, you can place a bag right there, and just on the other side is the ticketing uh, area where you go in to get your ticket. And not only that, if you don't want to place a bag right there, I can hide something into these uh, shrubbery, into the shrubbery. So, yeah. a lot of the airports, all your airports, they usually have, um, you know, police canine or TSA canine. So, how often are they walking around sweeping this area? So, that's something you want to keep in mind. You know, utilize uh, your resources which you already have. You know, I don't want to come into your location and tell you to spend money on this, that, and the other, and you already have these safety features in place, but I wanna know how are you utilizing these uh, safety features. So definitely take advantage of uh, you know, your police presence or your uh, uh, traffic officers along the terminal frontage. And if not, you know, utilize the canine dogs. You know, and, and not only that, you also have your maintenance crew at the airport. They should be going around you know, the entire airport ensuring that you know, your shrubbery, your grass, and everything is well maintained. And the uh, picture on the right, and that was a great job of uh, excellent uses of signage. 
you know, just uh, along the uh, terminal frontage. And I wanted to highlight this one right here uh, as you uh, go inside this airport. You know, you have the bollards along the front uh, of the uh, entrance. Again, no vehicle can penetrate. But the biggest thing, signage is so important, uh, not just for airports, but especially in this COVID world right now, as we walk into the grocery store, we see, you know, placards on the floor six feet distance uh, when you stand in line to pay for your items. So definitely, you know, take advantage of the signage. And, you know, I know with airports, they have to have signage in and around the airports and they have to be so many feet apart from each other. But I just wanted to highlight a uh, great job here uh, with the picture on the uh, right. Right. Right, and then these are the do's and don'ts of uh, of the uh, those two pictures there. Okay, right. that's that's all of our pictures. We just have one last one. Let's see if you can spot what's in this picture, and then we'll tell you a little story about it. Anybody in the chat? Let's see if you can see what are we trying to find in this picture. Where is Waldo? Right, <laughs> <laughs> or Iggy, whatever you want to call him. <laughs> Okay, nobody can find it. I did a good job then of hiding it in the brush there. <laughs> yep, in the middle of the pic, the lizard, exactly. Yep. So, Stacy, why don't you tell us about your little friend here? <laughs> yeah, uh, this is definitely, uh, this is something new for me. Um, again, you know, when I was out at this airport, you know, we were riding around doing the uh, perimeter check. And of course, you know, you want to look at all the uh, access vehicle gates, uh, how are they being utilized? Uh, you want to make sure there's no holes, anything in the gates. And you also want to make sure the uh, perimeter gate, you know, is well and well maintained. So in doing this, uh, we wanted to have fun with this one, but I was doing this uh, physical security assessment at this airport. And as I was walking around now, you know, when you go out, you know, you, you will have to get dirty. You, you can't sit in the vehicle and take pictures or, or not go out in the elements. So as I'm walking around trying to look at, you know, certain areas of the perimeter fence, um, you know, I, I ran across this iguana and, and it scared me. I mean, I don't want to, you know, mention what I said or how high <laughs> I jumped in the air, but, you know, I was told that this is a, you know, this is a normal thing where I was that they have iguanas all over the place. And of course, you know, I tiptoed right back to the vehicle and got back inside, but you know, I had to just suck it up and say, hey, I have to do my job. And, and I just wanted to highlight this again. You know, we do so many webinars. I'm sure a lot of you sit in on webinars and, and you want to have fun with them. And you don't just want to be, you know, straightforward and to the point. So again, uh, one of the things you want to keep in mind, however, uh, even though you guys were able to point out this iguana, you know, look at the uh, vegetation uh, along um, behind the iguana. So that's definitely something that should be uh, considered. I know uh, the incident that occurred out in uh, San Francisco at the uh, Garlic Festival, uh, the, the gentleman, he was able to go around the back of that festival uh, and cut a hole in the perimeter fence because there was a lot of vegetation along that area. And he was able to uh, get through and uh, shoot up the area. Um, so again, you know, if you have a perimeter fence around your uh, business or facilities, make sure uh, it's well maintained. And not only that, if you're gonna run a business and you're gonna use a perimeter fence, why continuously spend money redoing your perimeter fence when you can uh, take care of it right then and there if you know that's an issue. So again, you know, a lot of vegetation in this area and I know airports are, are massive and by the time you finish one sec section of the airport, it's time to do the other section. So just be mindful of that, you know, the vegetation and what it can do to your perimeter fence. And uh, just don't be scared of iguanas like I was. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're a tall guy, but I could, I, I know that uh, if that was coming at me, even, you know, at a slow speed, I'd, <laughs> I'd be running in the opposite direction because I just don't know. I don't, I don't have a lot of trust for, you know, yeah. wild animals, I guess. <laughs> you just don't know how they're going to act. Yes. Oh, and there's our little buddy. <laughs> we got to add that little buddy in there. <laughs> So we talked about a lot today, you know, I, I want to make sure I provide you with some really important resources. Of course, you know, Stacy, thank you so much for, for everything, you know, all of your input today and your perspective. You can find out more information about Stacy at portaglobalsecurity.net. Um, of course, we talked, I, I, I didn't even expect to have, you know, that little um, insert about punch alert, but, you know, community communication and making sure your visitors are feeling safe at your facilities. If you're more interested about talking about the future of safety and putting a panic button in the palm of their hands so that it can streamline that to them, 
um, you know, pentalert.com is, is a resource for that. And then of course, you know, we're all in a global crisis right now um, and we all wanna be uh, crisis ready for the next time. There's an awesome community support network that you can find at crisisreadycommunity.com. And then of course we talked about that fly safe uh, technology. We have the resource there for you. And then the, the last three were just a couple of, you know, August travel restrictions, states requiring out of state travelers to quarantine, just some uh, information about checking in and making it, the experience even safer. So there's just some fun little resources there as well for you. And of course we'll share this deck with you um, and the recording of this of this webinar. And, uh, you know, we'll open it up for questions. It looks like we have a couple more minutes, um, but we just wanna thank you so much for joining us today. You know, feel free to reach out to either one of us with any questions. And then of course, uh, please fill out the survey at the end um, because it definitely helps us uh, be able to have more fun with you uh, on this webinar series that we've been doing and just having fun with over the summer to keep us sane through our COVID uh, quarantine, right, Stacy? <laughs> We're like, what are we going to do to have have a little bit of yes, yes. Um, well, so. And, and we wanted to do something unique and different because, again, we're in the summer months, and, and I know as we start to wind down and school starts to pick back up, a, a lot of people since March, we've all been quarantined. It's like, okay, where can I go? What can I do? But one thing you want to keep in mind, and I tell people this all the time, a lot of times we take things for granted. And what I mean by that, you know, whatever state you live in, you know, look at all the uh, wonderful features that you have in your state. Um, you know, you necessarily may have to travel out of state to enjoy yourselves. Uh, you may have so many things going on in your state where you can just jump in your vehicle and, you know, just, you know, you know have a little weekend getaway. So just keep that in mind. But if you have to travel, again, make sure you uh, look at your, uh, you know, where you're going. Will I have to quarantine for 14 days? If not, well, I have to fill out X, Y, Z amount of paperwork. We saw, you know, I always tell people over and over, when you're going to travel, make sure you're utilizing the State Department. I know right now the European Union is where many of us like to travel for vacation. We're not authorized to travel there yet, but we can travel internationally right now where we can go to the Caribbean islands. But again, make sure you do your homework and make sure uh, you read what stipulations they have in place for that. Yes, and again, I'm just gonna throw it in there, travel advisors, right? They will help you sort through all the noise of what you're gonna find when you go you know, to uh, do your research about where you can travel, when you can travel, how you can travel to get there, all of those things. Um, so don't just think about them for international travel. They, they're amazing resources for domestic travel as well. You know, they've gotten out and they, they find all the back roads and they find all the uh, little mom and pop places that you absolutely have to see. Um, so just again, you know, reach out to a travel advisor. And if you have trouble finding one, reach out to me. I'd be happy to point you in the right direction. So I just want to thank you so much, everybody, for your comments in the chat. And, uh, and thank you for, you know, letting us know that it was great information and a great presentation. Uh, again, thank you, Stacy, so much for your time today and everybody for your patience on the technical, the technicalities, you know, uh, of technology. Can't help it sometimes and especially when everybody's online these days. Um, it, it's iffy <laughs> if it's going to work or not, right? Um, so thank you so much, Stacey, yes. and, and the group for joining You're us welcome. today. And uh, we hope that you just have a, a wonderful rest of your week and we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. Thanks so much.